Engineering Analysis 2. So today we're going to be doing a calculus review. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on basically on the exponent exponent rules and on the trigonometric rules. In a following video, we're going to be talking about integration by parts and integration by substitution. And then in a future video, we'll be talking about uh, the separation of method, which is differential equations, the method of separation of variables. So let's get right on with the video. So if you do remember from calculus, hopefully, uh, we we're, we're going to be talking about the exponents uh, rules. Uh, and basically what this one says is that we have, uh, whenever we have exponents, we, we need to treat them a certain way. And with this one, we're talking about, you know, th those exponentials of the e to raised to the something. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few examples. So we have exponent rules and we have let's say e to the a plus b what will be another way in which we can rewrite this uh, in exponents and hopefully from calculus you remember that we can split the, the exponents on the top the powers is a sum it can be rewritten as a multiplication of two exponentials so e, e to the a times e to the b if we have the following, let's say e to the a minus b, what will that one look like? Uh, we have also e to the negative a. We have e to the natural log of a. We have e to the b times the natural log of a. And we also have, um, I think I forgot one here. This is a natural log of e to the a. And then we have the e to the b times natural log of a. And then we have e to the zero. And our last one which will be e to the a times e to the negative a. All right, so we did the first one. So you guys can do this on your own, but hopefully as I was writing them, you were um, also uh, writing them and solving them. So for number two, uh, we have e to the a minus b. So if it's a plus, you know, the, the exponents are adding, they're multiplying, but if they are subtracting, they are dividing. So this is e to the a over e to the b, All right? Because you can see that b is negative. So if that's the case for number three, we will have uh, another way in which we can rewrite that is one over e to the a, All right? The a is in the bottom now. Uh, it's one over, right? So that way the exponent becomes positive. And if we do, number four, e to the ln of a, uh, you will see that e and natural log, they're basically in a way cancel each other. So the answer for this one will just be that exponent a. Same thing for this one. So whenever we raise uh, the natural log, an exponent in the power is the natural log, they basically uh, cancel out and we have a, and then we have then whenever we're taking the natural log of an exponential, same things happen here, and we're only left with a. So these are uh, identities or that you need to remember. So number six, uh, it's pretty similar, but you can see that instead of just being e to the ln of a, we have a, a power in the back. So what we do in that case is uh, before we can before we can cancel the natural log. We're going to do e to the natural log of, and this will be a to the b. You can see this b basically becomes a power and the a, so it will be a raised to that coefficient that was in front. So I mean, that's how you manipulate uh, logarithms. So that coefficient becomes then a um, power, and now we have e to the natural log of 
a to the b and then our final answer from this one after we cancel this and this we're just left with a to the b uh, then for this one e to the zero that's pretty straightforward every time you have something raised to the zero the answer is just one and then here this one we have opposite exponents so whenever you have opposite exponents uh, basically you have e to the a minus e to the a uh, and I mean a minus a that will be zero and we know that e to the zero is just one so once again every time you have uh, exponents that are the same value but opposite in sign we are going to be um, basically canceling them and it just becomes a one e to the zero because it's a one so that is exponents uh, rules i hope that you guys remember this and in this class we're going to be using these ones a lot so make sure that you come back to this video these notes will be provided to you as well uh, but make sure you always have this with you because you will basically most problems will have to use some of this information one way or another so please remember this ones all right so that's the first for the exponential rules we're going to continue with the uh, trig rules um then i'm going to write over here so that's that one and then we have over here uh this is trigonometric rules so and this one's basically just some identities that hopefully you guys um are able to remember let me just fix this and there we go so for the trigonometric rules um uh, let's start simple we have the pythagorean theorem right we have a a triangle and then we have let's say we're we're gonna be labeling this size uh this side as y this side as x this is our hypotenuse and this is our angle theta and we know this is a right triangle so uh if we were to write this pythagorean term what does it say we have that uh, the sum of the squares equal to the hypotenuse square so we have then x squared plus y squared is equal to the hypotenuse square right a squared plus b squared equals c squared simple now, if I'm looking, let's say, if I want to find cosine of the angle theta, if you remember your Sokotoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So from this angle theta, my adjacent side is x over my hypotenuse. And then you can just rearrange to find whatever you might need. If you, if you want to find theta, you don't know what it is, you can do cosine inverse. All right, I'm just going to write it here as an example. So if you want to find, let's say, theta, in this case, it's the cosine of theta, and this is theta, so this will be cosine inverse of x over the hypotenuse. All right, let's say we want to find sine of theta. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this will be y over hypotenuse and same thing we want to find theta it will be sine inverse of y over hypotenuse and the other one that we need to find will be tangent of theta which will be opposite over adjacent which in this case will be y over x or you can also find theta by doing sine of theta over cosine of theta and these are things that hopefully you guys do remember and so that they don't become so that you know you can get advantage of them and it doesn't become too hard okay so from this we also have a few more identities um i think i can write them here so we have let me draw the unit circle 
and we have something like this. So this is first the coordinate system. And then I will draw my circle. Okay, this one came out like an oval. This is more like a, like a circle. There we go. So in our circle, uh, we start our uh, from the usually from this point, which will be this coordinate, which we label as zero or two pi once we do a full rotation. And we're moving in that direction. So then over here, these other points is will be, this is in radians, so this will be pi over two. This point over here it's pi, and this point over here is three pi over two, or if you go backwards, it will be negative pi over two. And then once you go back to the beginning, you have um, two pi. And then you can use this, you can draw the radius, and you can have your angle theta here. And once again, all of this is in radians. So from this unit circle, we can get different identities. So I'll center it here. So let's say, let, let's find. So if we have um, cosine of zero or two pi, what will be its value? So reading from this, um, we have whenever cosine is zero or two pi, um, our values basically of the radius will be uh, one because this side it's a one. And let me just those are the angles, but these ones are also you know the the values here one, and then we have negative one and negative one in a y x and y n x coordinates. And then the, the other numbers are in radians, which are, should be in blue. All right, so this is an identity. So cosine of zero or cosine of two pi, you will get one. If, if we find then cosine of pi over two, so let's look at it That's cosine over here or pi over two over here. Uh, well, that's on y, so that will be zero on the x. So that's zero. If we then have cosine of pi, so we are now on this side over here. So we made half a revolution, that's pi. We, our value in this case will be negative one. And then if we have cosine of three pi over two, this will be zero once again and it's all based from this unit circle right so goes on over here there's no x you can see where x is zero so if we were to like get the point from here this will be zero comma one so so basically the coordinates uh you guys remember this i'm just trying to do a little review so that's for cosine let's do for sine so once again, for the same number, sine of zero or two pi, and then we have sine of pi over two, sine of pi, and then sine of three pi over two. And you can see that for sine of zero or two pi, whenever we are here, there is one on the x, so the coordinates will be 0, 1. I mean, you know, uh, backwards, this is 1, 0. So then for sine of 0 or 2 pi, our value is 0. When sine is pi over 2 over here, this coordinates will be 0, 1. So this will be now 1. Once we get back to sine of pi, this will be once again 0. And then sine of three pi over two, that's negative 
of one because it's not the bottom. And you can see we can find then all the coordinate pairs as we're moving along the circle, which is will be over here, uh, one comma zero, and then over here will be zero comma one, and then this will be here will be negative one comma zero, and then zero comma negative one. And those are the coordinates that we find uh, in the unit circle. So those are the, the unit circle identities. Um, these are gonna be really useful when we're gonna start dealing with uh, this and like later on chapters. It's really good that you remember that cosine of zeros and two pi, it's one. Cosine of just pi or like even pi's, one, three, five, and so on, it's negative one, so it will be alternating. Uh, well, for signs of any pi whatsoever, whether it's positive, negative, evens or odds, signs of any pi's, full, whole pi's, it's always zero. Uh, so, and then we have the last identities um, that we will be using uh, soon. We have also these identities. Um, we have that whenever you have sign of negative theta, you can rewrite this as negative sine of positive theta. And whenever you have cosine of negative theta, it's the same thing as cosine of positive theta. So let's say you have sine of 30, of sine of negative 30. It will be the same thing as negative sine of positive 30. Or you have cosine of uh, negative 45, it is the same thing as cosine of positive 45. That's another identity. And let's not forget uh, our other identities or, or, uh, that we have. For example, we know that sine square of theta plus cosine square of theta is equals to one, which is the one that we always know, right? Sine square plus cosine square equals to one. We have also one plus tangent square of theta is equals to secant square of theta. And then we have one plus cotangent square of theta is equals to cosecant square of theta. These are some of the identities that we have. And another way in which we can also rewrite cosine square and cosine square, but I don't, I don't read it. we really don't use those a lot. So that is it. That's just, this is what we have been reviewing so far. So we have our trigonometric rules. Right over here says so our trig rules. Um, so hopefully you guys can remember this ones. Uh, they're gonna come in the class. So there's some some of the topics that you guys need to remember from calculus. There's a whole lot more that we're gonna cover, but at least for now, this is like the basic, basic, I guess, things from pre-calc even that you should remember. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.